My name is Amit. I am here representing a, a EPC company uh, called Larson and Tubro. A quick introduction uh, before I get into the details of the presentation. Uh, we are an organization founded in 1938, uh, having $21 billion uh, revenue as we speak today, AAA rated. We have a presence in about 30 plus countries and uh, a management strength of 55,000 plus. Uh, and we have been in uh, the Middle East and committed to the region for the last 40 odd years. I uh, represent a division which is into mining metals and industrial projects within Larson and Tubro. Uh, we are into iron making, steel, aluminum, zinc, copper, gold, and uh, various other metals, as well as industrial plants, and delivering some of the large plants uh, right now in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. So what we provide is a comprehensive EPC solution in the industrial space uh, over the last four decades. So I now come to our subject of today, uh, BIM, uh, Digital Twin. So uh, I have been uh, personally driving this passionately over the last few years, uh, making sure that all our mega projects in the region, including the one in the kingdom, are uh, fully on BIM platform. Uh, we have a digital twin, and uh, we've also got a 4D um, a tool to monitor the project live, uh, both internally as well as with external stakeholders. And of course, once we have this BIM model for the project, we, we use it in the field for purpose of construction. Uh, we train our people through, uh, uh, through the VRs. And uh, of course, uh, this brings in a lot of uh, advantage to the delivery. So I'm more on the delivery side now. We are, as I told, we are on the EPC side. So uh, how the digital twill would benefit ultimately the operation and maintenance will also be covered. But I will also, uh, I'll uh, be more uh, particular on the benefits that this technology brings to EPC projects and construction in general. So how does uh, BIM enable? Now, I, I want to make a disclaimer here. As you know, we are an EPC company, so we are not uh, giving any preference to one software or solution provider over the other. Uh, we value all of them equally. I might show some uh, slides which are from a particular uh, platform, but that doesn't mean that uh, we don't recognize other platforms. It's just for this uh, purpose of sharing the details in the presentation today. So what you see on the screen now is, of course, uh, how does BIM uh, as a platform help us uh, on the EPC space? So yes, it, it, especially in complex project, it reduces engineering rework because we are on a 3D platform. Uh, we have all stakeholders working on the same platform at the same time. Uh, and when we have a well-developed engineering 3D model, it obviously reduces construction rework and uh, we have all also been able to extend this uh, in terms of project monitoring real time. How do we do that? Uh, so we do it like this. We, uh, you know, typically any EPC company would have a design team, which would be an in-house design team. And uh, uh, that has always been there right from the beginning. Now this design team, which involves all disciplines, uh, integrates uh, the information into a 3D model and I'll come to a digital twin a little later. We have a BIM team, which, uh, which kind of interfaces between the project team. So as you know, uh, project teams typically build up schedules, either in uh, Microsoft Project or B6 or whatever it is. And these are integrated with the 3D model to develop the 4D, and uh, which helps us uh, to, of course, plan uh, safety management, site management, and various other aspects. And uh, of course, uh, once we mature with all the information coming back from the market, we develop, a, a, we integrate all the information in the 3D model, uh, delivering a digital twin to the end customer for the purpose of operation and maintenance. Uh, this is a very typical uh, uh, circuit, which I would like to show here. For example, this is one of the facilities, one, one portion, one uh, work package in the facility. So this is first designed on a 3D platform. Uh, the design consistency interface checks are all done. And then of course we move into the, the asset is physically created as you can see on the top, this is physical asset created. And then the asset of course comes back, uh, uh, you, know, you know, all the information from construction procurement is integrated in the 3D model to, uh, to deliver a digital twin. And uh, some of the pictures you can see here of the 3D model and the actual work 
which is currently being delivered in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Uh, our engineers are able to extend this. So you see this is a picture from the design workshop where uh, a digital twin is displayed. And if you click on the, on the uh, asset, there are different assets starting from the smallest of instruments to, to large equipment. So what we are able to integrate in this is starting from P&ID, which in our business is process and instrumentation diagram, the GA drawings of the equipment, uh, the entire equipment list and the data sheet. That means the specifications of every component which goes into the project alongside with its operation and maintenance manuals, et cetera. So this is again a, a, a digital twin software which is being used by one of our engineer. And once he presses on the specific item, then uh, you know we, we can, I've hidden that information here for, for sake of confidentiality, but uh, you could get all the relevant technical informations about a particular equipment uh, once you go into that into that platform. And how does it work? So you know you will have a, a, a complete uh, view of the plant as, as a typical plant which is shown here, which is a home screen. And then you have the first level of hierarchy where you see the various areas where are various items. And within the area, you could then get into different zones. You know, in large complex projects, you have different work packages. And within that work package, you can then go down to the equipment or the, or the particular item. And when you click on the item, then you have all the material of construction, the, the specifications, the uh, maintenance requirements, and all those integrated uh, in the software itself. Uh, moving on, we have also used uh, this platform very effectively for purpose of our project reviews, uh, which is in the, uh, during the time of construction. So as you know, typically a project starts with the basic engineering, which is a very basic level of design. Uh, and at that stage, we also have the level one schedule, which is a very high level uh, schedule of the project. So we start off very early. In fact, in this project that I'm talking of, we started off very early with a 4D platform. And uh, we were doing our project reviews on this platform right from the beginning. And in the course of the development of project, the engineering progressed and we had more detailed engineering coming in. And of course, uh, the schedules were also developed to different levels of details, like level two, three, and four. And uh, it was online. The integration was happening online. We didn't have to build it again. So from this level, every time the 4D would get updated, you know, there's a synchronization process with it. Every new information gets embedded into the old one. And uh, we have an updated information across the entire stakeholders of the project, starting from engineering team, procurement, construction site, customer, and everyone involved in the process. So some of the advantages we have seen of implementing this uh, BIM is, of course, as I said, in construction, we use it for various purposes. I'm just going to elaborate some of them today. First one being clash checking, assembly checking at the digital level without actually getting onto the field. So these are some of the pictures where we've seen, we've placed our cranes, we've placed some large equipment, we've seen how the fitment happens, uh, including the details of where would we hook them. And uh, so that we are sure of uh, what we are doing when we hit the ground. And uh, we have minimum challenges or surprises coming our way when we are physically doing the work on ground. Also, uh, as you know, uh, uh, slip form, form work, and all these can get quite complicated when you have constraint areas, narrow areas in construction sites. So uh, BIM platform also helps us to develop the form work arrangement. Uh, we can look at the support arrangements. We can look at the constraint challenges digitally and then deliver it to our carpenters and uh, site supervision who can implement it based on the, on the models developed by our engineers uh, on this platform. Likewise, we also look at some, uh, we, are, we are also able to do a lot of rehearsals, you know, uh, live rehearsals uh, using the 3D platform and BIM platform uh, before we do heavy lift. So, uh, so some of the heavy lifts that you see here ranging from let's say 50 ton to 350 ton, 400 tons uh, can easily be uh, uh, simulated on this platform. And we can check for the location of the crane, the, the movement, the kind of interferences, uh, uh, various other issues that, that could typically crop up during the stage of uh, construction. Uh, 
this is another one again live. Uh, this is again from the same project in the kingdom, what is being delivered by us, where uh, you will see that uh, the interface check has been done. Uh, again, a silo. So these are some examples I wanted to show. I can go on and on because the subject very close to my heart, but looking at the time constraint. The last thing which I would like to show is also the uh, project management and planning. As you can see that uh, we've, uh, you know, this is a typical model where we, where we have seen what was our plan, what is the actual, where are we lagging? And then we can do also a 60 day look ahead plan, which can show what exactly are we going to do in the next 60 days so that all of us on the ground and in the engineering platform are aligned to one particular uh, goal and plan. Uh, same way with the structures. And uh, of course, this goes all the way into field collaboration, as I mentioned in my first slide, where the exact information is available with people on ground, on their, iP on their uh, tablets, which can be uh, seen with, uh, by them live. Uh, we use a lot of VRs for the purpose of uh, demonstrating and doing safety practices. And uh, this has been very handy for us in this project as well. Thank you all for your attention.